And, you know, I just uh, have to say that uh, in this entire mess that we seem to find ourselves in today, I mean, th there was a word spoken earlier. There's another uh, transmission coming your way. It's like it's, it's almost two hours long. So you'll get this, you'll get the last hour, you'll get this hour, and you'll get that. So there's kind of a lot of audio material that will be up, but part of it, kind of the heart of it is that during this period of time, and this is what we'll be talking with our guest Govin in just one second on, during this time, you know, they will be going down, and they are, and you see them panicking and, and going crazy, and their whole thing is being exposed, and like I say, usually they'll throw a war to, to hide themselves, because they always want to hide themselves. All psychopaths want to hide themselves, but um, that the uh, lambs of God, the people of God, the people on the way, the truth, and life, they will not, not only be witnesses, but be intact at this time. They will be, some of them, very successful during this time. At the oddest time where people, you would think just the opposite would be true for everyone. Not so. You'll, there will be winners and losers. It just won't be predictable or what you might think. And so let me get um, uh, Govinda to chime in here and see what his thoughts are on this situation. Welcome, Govinda of Sri Lanka. Welcome back. Hey, what's up, Z? How you guys doing out there? Uh, we are, <clears throat> we're having, um, like in the words of another broadcaster, more fun than human beings should be allowed to have. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good time. My gosh, it's a great time for the people of God. It is, and and that's I you know, and a lot of stuff is coming clear right now that wasn't clear before, and that's help you know as a help, not as a hindrance, but as a help to people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is you know we're all in process and we're all on a path, and um, you know the path has ups and downs and valleys and periods of stretching and difficulties. But you know when you look back, if you've walked and you followed Jesus, you look back and you wouldn't trade any of it because it all has been part and parcel of the process that He puts His people through to make them what He desires them to be, which is a reflection of Him. Yeah, and you know it's not without struggle. It's not without, um, you know, just amazingly horrific things, but you, we tend to slide through them again because of the power and the might and because our Father loves us and because of our faith in Jesus Christ and that, that power that, that comes with that gets us through these di difficult situations. And then, you know, we, you might say, well, I don't like having a difficult situation. I don't like going through these things. Why can't I just catch a break? And the, the well, actually, actually, God allows for the difficult situations on purpose. Yeah. You know, this is something that, you know, I, it, it was something I wish, I wish somebody would have clued me in on this a long time ago, because actually God allows for the orchestration of our circumstances for them to be difficult, because it's through those trials, it's through those difficult periods of time that we get stretched, that we... Uh, if you if you're walking with Christ, that's you, you need those those times. You need that struggle because that, in and of itself, is what um, is used to to push us within into our relationship with Him. Because the kingdom is within. Yeah. And you know the 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 worlders they get stuck because everything that they base their life and um, their existence upon is without. Right. And well, they they <clears throat> they um, are on their way to becoming you know, uh, having no conscience and having, uh, you know, they know about the evil they're involved in. And then they go home to their children and to their families, having uh, done what they had to do, they think, to survive and justifying it that way. And then, you know, the, the, the idea of going home to your family and having dinner at the dinner table with your wife and your children after out there uh, and then going to church with them, let's say, uh, after being out there running and gunning for Satan, is you wonder how they can do that with a clear conscience. Obviously, they don't. I mean, that's the first part that goes, that gets um, destroyed, is one's ability to feel guilt. And if you can't feel guilt, you can't feel love either. So then, yeah. then what's well, the I mean, it becomes, a, it becomes a club, and people pat each other on the back, telling each other they're okay. And so, you know, they, they, get, they get a bunch of other people that are all kind of in the same boat, and they're all like, okay, I'm okay, you're okay. And the guy that they've got up there, you know, with the degrees on the walls and the rest of it, he tells them they're okay too. So they figure they've got because of the numbers. But there's always something gnawing 
uh, inside of them and that there's something not right. And they know that that gets um, really revealed when they're around a true child of God. Because when somebody's around one of the real ones, they realize the difference between um, where they are and where they should be and where they could be if they would follow him. Yeah, and you So that's one reason why they keep trying to put out the light. But then they don't want it because they don't want to go through what you go through. They don't want to go, um, you know, just using my, uh, my example with the truck and all the things I had with that. They don't want to go playing Russian roulette with mechanics wondering if someone's going to sabotage the vehicle. They, don't, they, they want to know that's not going to happen. So that's another reason they hang in. Yeah, but you know that that whole process of kind of hanging in and being part of that system. The problem with that is that they never attain life. They never attain uh, a true life. You know, Jesus said, "I came that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly." In John ten, and that abundant life is a result of following Him. When you follow Him, you go through these difficulties, and these difficulties are what actually bring you through the breaking process necessary for life to spring forth in and through you. Yeah. So, you know, God puts all these examples in nature so that people can actually see them. I mean, the whole thing about a seed, um, you know, going to the ground, Jesus talked about that too. And you got to be broken for that seed, for, for life to spring forth from it. God allows for his people to be shattered into a thousand pieces and then made whole in Christ. And then the new life that comes out is, uh, is him. Right. I you know it's it's uh, it's something that a lot of people don't want to do because they feel like they're losing their own lives. And you know when they they don't want to admit well, they are. <laughs> they don't want to <laughs> they admit. Are. Right, but they don't they don't want to admit that it's about him not us. So therefore we we have confidence because he's God that well okay Lord whatever you want to do with me I'm just going to throw myself into you and not think about it anymore. Of course he loves that. Not the easiest thing to do though. Cuz it's a real Well, and it's a trust factor. Because that's that's the whole thing. When somebody followed Jesus, you know, it was they were trusting him. They were trusting that, you know, he was who he said he was, that um, he would do what he said he would do. And, you know, this there's something that was interesting to me I, I, when I just think about, you know, Jesus walking around. Like a lot of people would show up when he came to town. But, you know, to follow him, you have to leave everything that you knew and and go out and you're completely dependent on on him and you know so if you were going to travel with him if you were going to truly walk with him and not just be an observer of of what he did you'd have to leave you'd have to go you'd have to basically wherever it was that he would go you'd have to go with him and that was the initial test for people you know just that will they leave what it is that they know and they're comfortable with well first i'll go bury my father and go to the funeral then i'll follow you no let the dead bury the dead well um you know sell everything you have give it to the poor and follow me and there there are things like that in other words uh if you don't hate your mother and father if you don't hate your 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 life and your life unto death if you don't hate the situation you're in is what what he really means you cannot be my disciple you, you, you have yeah, basically what uh, yeah basically whatever it is that's blocking you because you know each each one of those things is whatever it is that's that uh, that first place in your life that lordship in your life you know whether it be your family whether it be <clears throat> your possessions whether it be your career whatever it may be you know the, the thing is is that it's it's a matter of priorities it's a matter of placement and um, you know Jesus even with the rich young ruler you know what he told him was, hey, you know, first go sell everything, and then come follow me. Basically, get rid of this block by your free will. Put that thing aside, you know, and then, then come follow me. Now you're in a place where you can actually do this. And, you know, he'll test us in that. He'll test us in whatever it is that we care about most in this life. Um, it's a hard test because you come to an end of yourself in that. But if you trust him, he'll carry you through. If you don't trust him, that's where you stop. Yep, and that's where the faith comes in, and that's why your site is called faithmix.com. How do you like that for a segue? Faithmix.com. <laughs> if you want to hear Govinda yeah. and his, his amazing words and revelations and all, uh, he has this site, faithmix.com, and we have a link on our site. You can go there, and there's a wealth of audios, information, all kinds of things to, to further your you know, walk in faith. A lot of people that I know, they, they kind of... They listen to uh, here. They tune in to you. They read Brother Thomas, 
and they say that's all I feel I need and I'm like well what more do you want I mean <laughs> it's a lot right there <laughs> and if you can find others you know we have others too we've got uh, you know Jim Riley on the economic front we've got uh, various other people that are um, obviously contributing to this there's no easy way I, I think I just have to keep saying this there's no easy way but it becomes easy even though it's not easy when you're broken and you don't care anymore that it's not easy or you don't care anymore that they hate you or you don't care anymore that you're um, that you have to be cautious and you can't just relax like the Satanists can um, it, you know it's it's sort of like God's looking for his his people his army and in Gideon's army they were 300 are chosen because they wouldn't just dunk their faces when they're thirsty into the water, they'll cup the water, bring it up to their lips, and keep their eyes on the perimeter at all times, knowing they are embattled, knowing there's a war on. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, you, you, have, you have to embrace it. You know, I, 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 you know one thing I realized, and I, I, I realized this um, when God kind of put me in what was a, a difficult assignment at the time, and um, it, was a, it was externally the situation was, was rough. But, you know, one thing that God showed me even in that time was that, you know, when I, um, I, I the, the scripture that even came back to me at that time was even the whole Acts 16 situation where, you know, you've got Paul and Silas inside the jail, um, their backs are ripped open. You know, my, now I think about that one sometime. Here, here's Paul and Silas praying, you know, God, where should we go in Acts 15? And then they have the vision of the man of Macedonia, and they're like they were convinced that God was sending them to this next place. And the next place that God sends them into, sure enough, in the very, very near future, they end up, uh, you know, just totally uh, broken physically, uh, tossed into the worst possible place they could be in the city. And that was the perfect will of God for them. But in that situation, because of the fact that they were in connection with the Spirit of God and their life was not dictated by their external circumstances because they were in that frame of spirit and mind and trust in God that's when uh, you can live in that peace and that's when God's power flows through people to to change the entire situation your your enemy in that situation the very person that ripped open your back a few hours ago can become your brother a few hours later yeah, that's what happened with that jailer in that situation. Yeah, depending so depending on how you react. I mean, if you react like yeah. like the world does, probably not. But if you react by singing and praying and giving glory to God, the jailer's going to look like what the what the heck's going on here? What what is this? This yeah. is this is these people have overcome all the the horrors I'm doing to them. They've overcome them already. And so it and, and you know is that. People, people watch our lives. You know, they, they watch how we go through the things that come our way. And they know for themselves the difference between the way that they would go through it in themselves and in their flesh and in their own abilities and the way that we go through uh, struggles in Christ and how we have joy and how we have peace and how we are praising God in the midst of the things that we go through and how they know that even something small trivial will will throw them off completely they, they fall down once they can't get back up again we get back up over and over and over again stronger every time yeah and uh and and falling down is not necessarily the worst thing that can happen or being set back i've had you know things it's really a kind of an internal mental thing where i can't get over this idea that people for no reason would want to murder uh an innocent one that's not you know, but they would track them and then try to set them up in a trap to murder them. And, you know, and this is persecution 101. But why they would actually murder them if they didn't, not only did they not do any harm to them, but they were all about blessing them. And yet they would murder them. And I've been stuck. And I know what the Bible says. I mean, the Bible is like uh, filled with, um, you know, the right responses to that. And also, the persecuted church has many, many stories of, you know, the preacher down the street and the, you know, the infiltrators coming in, you know, burning down the church, killing everyone and the pastor and his family and going on like that. I mean, there's plenty of 
examples, you can go you know, to Voice of the Martyrs or anything else and read these examples over and over and over again of this kind of persecution where they actually will kill someone, or even children, who meant them no harm. Yeah, but Zeth, Zeth, they're under orders. I mean, because they've given themselves over to the prince of the power of this air, of the air, of this world system, which is completely that enmity with the children of light and truth and God's people. And when they've given themselves over to that, basically, they're under orders from that spiritual um, realm to do the things that they do. And so for themselves, I mean, they're slaves to to the world. They're slaves to the demonic powers. And for them, if they're going to be part of that system, they do what they're told. So, I mean, there is a demonic hierarchy that is the enemy of the people of God that basically tells them what to do. And these guys don't have a choice in the matter. Well, they I mean, get, their choice is... Yeah, well, they get home and then they have bread, break bread with their children and their friends. And they even pray to their God. And they even pray for blessings and healings after doing the killing. I mean, you know, it's well, a, they get they get their they get their momentary pops too, out of all of that. But the problem for them is that they're 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 dying even while they're still breathing. You know, they're they're withering even while they're still walking. And you know, this is um, you know what's amazing to me, Zeph. Sometimes when I see these worlders, is how old they look when they're still young you know how how quickly they just start withering even while they're still alive i mean all these plastic surgeries and face creams and all this stuff that they try to do to just try to look like there's there's no life in them they're no just uh, we've, dead. They're yeah walking they, dead. they become dead over time um and they get to the point when they get older where there really isn't anything left in there that there's no question of salvation because there's nothing there to be saved at that point. And we've seen this over and over again, and it's a really sad thing, but um, <clears throat> it's, it's as if they cross a threshold at some point in their life where the plug is just pulled and they die, but their, their physical life goes on. And um, it's, it's, uh, it, uh, many times these people become you know, feeble or what we might call senile, but it's not that that's doing it. It's really the fact that there's it that's just like a tape recording going round and round to make people convinced that that person's still there when they're really not because satan always wants to to act like and to make it like well my people live on you know a long lives where the lambs get cut short <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah but the no, bible it's, it's that's go ahead sorry no i mean that's that's just uh, you know it's he, the devil is, is uh, he's quite a cruel master. You know, he, the people that, that, that go in, the things that they think they're signing up for, when they actually see what it is that's on the other side, uh, I mean, it's, they have to sedate themselves, they have to uh, do a bunch of different things just to try to keep themselves from actually having to face what it is that they've signed up. What, what do you think they're going to face? What do you think it is? Well, on one side, it's an eternal reality of their choice. You know, see, this, this life is, is transitory. Every one of us is passing through here. We're only here for a very short window. And we go on into an eternity uh, of the ramification of the choice that we've made, that God respects that free will choice that we make as well, to follow him or to not. And they get the eternal manifestation of that. So, you know, this is why, too, that which is within is what's real. So all these things that people do in amassing wealth and uh, position and power and liposuctioning and all the stuff they're doing doesn't mean anything because... What's real is what's within, and that is what's revealed when this life is over. So they're going to face the revelation of that which is within with them. And either you've been made whole and one in Christ, and he's been made new man, that new person inside of you, ready and fit for that which is to come, or you haven't been. So, you know, that which they're going to face, they're going to face the truth. You know, everybody faces the truth. You know, big T, they, they face that truth when this life is done, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, 
whether you even know about it or not, you're going to face that truth. Every being will stand before God. Everyone Absolutely. will be giving an account before God. And, um, you know, Absolutely. it's really very, very clear. There is no free pass here. And uh, it, the book of Daniel says the, the, the wicked are going to go on to lives of, you know, you know, everlasting life of eternal shame. You know, eternal shame. Jesus just uh, doesn't pull any punches. He says they're going to burn in hell. People don't know that about yeah. Jesus. He, he says they're going to hell. <laughs> the, the, he's the one that talks about hell so much. Um, but but yeah. everlasting. Well, and, and, and it's a choice. It's a choice. You know, the thing is that, that is sometimes like when, when I talk to people about stuff like this, I think people, you know, they, they have a really hard time um, um, holding on to this reality. But it's true. You choose it. People choose it. They choose where it is that nobody is going to go anywhere by accident. Every place that people go is where they've chosen to go. Mm -hmm. And so if, if that, that standing before God in judgment, seeing it all played back, I think you did a talk about this recently on a huge video screen type of thing, you know, seeing all of it, all the things they si think are in secret, all the things they think they got away with are going to be blasted out before, oh, yes. before everybody. Oh, yes. No, know this. Everything that you've ever done, everything that you've ever said, all of it for your entire window of life here is going to be played back for the entire universe to see your entire life. All of it is there open. Nobody's hiding from anything. OK, so if we have I the... mean, it's 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 just the blood of Christ. Z. It's just the blood of Christ and what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. That is our pass. That's it. Because it is without the propitiation for our sin, without him having done that for us, all of us were doomed. And what? that's why somebody has to apply that and move with that and walk with him throughout, because that's the only way. What do you think of people that uh, they have interpreted the scripture in such a way that they say every being is going to be saved because what Jesus did on the cross, him being God, saves all people. No matter what you do or think or say, you're still saved because it's not your work, it's a work of God. Well, I mean, that's not what Jesus said, but <laughs> anyways. <laughs> no, you know, Zeph, the thing is that people, hear, people want to make... One of the things that people had a hard time with about Jesus was they wanted to make him into something that they wanted him to be. And they had a hard time with him basically being who he was. You know, they tried to, they, they tried to you know, force him to do certain things, uh, force his hand to do miracles, force his hand to do, uh, to, they wanted to make him a king really quick. You know, they, they wanted to quick, let's, let's promote you really fast, Jesus. You just fed 5,000. Make him a king. I, I mean, it's like they kept wanting to make Jesus something that that you know to to put to fashion him into their own image, into their own likeness, and he won't ever do that for you. Mm -hmm. He won't ever do that for anybody. All the, the the thing is is that the way that it works is there is a kingdom, which is the dominion of a king, and you, if you are going to follow this king, you bow your knee in allegiance to that king. And you submit yourself to his lordship, his way, his rule on his terms. There is no other way. And so the Jesus that you serve is the original Jesus. And Seth, a great prayer for somebody to pray is, Lord, if I am missing it, if I am off base, if I am not seeing you in the way and the truth and the life that you are, please correct me. Please show me. Please reveal the truth to me because I don't want to miss you. You know, that was a prayer my dad taught me to pray. It's a beautiful prayer because the thing is, is that the, the heart is deceitfully wicked and people can can dilute themselves. They can they can they can create a Jesus in their own image and they'll follow that. And then it's a very, very rude awakening. It's a very rude awakening. And when you get a Matthew seven experience where somebody said where he says, look, I don't know you. You know, I'm not consummated with you. You are one with something else. You're not one with me. Yeah, uh, I'm not in relation with you because we don't have a connection. And so if we don't have a connection, I don't know you. And uh, if we ever did have a connection, you'd be connected. So we never did have a connection in the first place because, one, you know, once you're saved, you're saved. So therefore, 
you, there is no connection. I never knew you. Yes, you prophesied in my name. You he did healings in my name. You preached the word out of the scriptures accurately in my name. You did all these things that would make everyone think you're really with me, but you're not. But you're yeah. not. And you know, the other, the other thing too, Zeph, is that, is that God has a way of um, working even in spite of people. You know, not and they're not necessarily working with him, but he is still accomplishing his purposes through people that even aren't on the right page with him. And this is one of those mysteries, uh, you know, where it took me a little while for to just like, okay, what in the world? Because, you know, he's still accomplishing his purposes, even though these people sometimes are off base, out of step, they don't know him. But even in those situations, God is able to work something out. And to meet people where they are because he still knows the individual heart he still knows the heart of somebody that wants to follow him somebody that is seeking him and god will find a way to get that message to get that truth to somebody that wants him yeah i agree so he is no respecter of persons no i agree though that uh if you really have a heart for god you really desire of god even if you start off in left field somewhere He's going to find a way to guide you into what he wants you to be and think and, and perceive, uh, you, you know, despite your limitation or your background or your prejudices or anything you may have or your idea of God even, you know, despite those things, he'll still bring you into truth. And then once we get into truth, what I've noticed is it's, it's not like you can immediately say it. In other words, um, okay, I'm in concert with God. I mean, I've been brought into the spirit of God. I've been brought into the Shekinah. I've been brought into the glory. I've been brought into this mystery. All I can say about it is it's a mystery. I don't know that I, that very intimate part where you, it's you and him and there you are. I can't really describe it. Uh, the Bible says, okay, we're in the secret place of the most high Psalm 91. It'll say, um, in, in Matthew 13, it'll say that, uh, you know, it, I, I don't give everyone, I don't reveal to everyone the mystery um, uh, of, uh, of the kingdom of God, but to those who can receive it. You know, I'm just paraphrasing, but to, you know, to those who can receive it, to those who have, I will give more to those who don't have what little they have, I'll take away. Because I am no respecter of persons. Because, but, but once you get there, like when Paul was uh, coming into the third heaven, he says, I really can't describe it. I just, you know, it's just like it gets to be, uh, you know, I'm willing to lay my life down for the thing because it's so great, but it, it, I can't really put it into words once you get beyond the veil of this existence. It's something so wonderful, so awesome, so tailored to our need that we can't fulfill here, and so, so much what we're yearning for, but to describe it to the world, that particular intimate thing, not possible. I don't no, know. No, no. I mean, Zeph, they would never get it anyways. They would never understand it anyway. See, this is the thing, is the natural mind can't grasp the things of God. I mean, any, any more than, say, you go see a beautiful sunset. Well, let somebody try to write and to describe that beautiful sunset. But some, say somebody sees this natural experience. Even the best author that this world has ever seen and ever known to be able to describe that experience of just seeing that sunset, his words would never do that justice. How much more the things of God? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's worth contending for because it's, one will never know any of this unless they actually make an effort. And uh, so this idea, yeah. the, this idea that there's no effort involved, you know, God does require something, and that is, you know, a heart for him uh, a, a, a real Absolutely. a love for him, a, a, a yearning for him that is that is genuine and honest and within a person and a person that's just faking it. I guess you can fake it for other humans and they'll say, oh, you're really a person of God. But and, and, and they may even be motivated by having a congregation, having people follow them, having people listen to them or whatever. But it doesn't really become even even ministry until it, one is brought into this secret place, this special uh, sanctuary of God that exists nowhere on earth. And once you've seen Absolutely. that and been there, it, you tend to stay with him because nothing on earth can even compare to it. So Absolutely. And, and Zeph, you know, one other thing too is that, is that even in this process, what happens is when somebody's come into that place, 
then God will speak to you through all kinds of things. I mean, so then you'll read something and the, the words that you read will, will have his life laced into them because he will speak to you through them. So when you read the word, the words just jump off the page at you and they, they, they minister to exactly where you're at. You will see a, a tree you will, and the wind blowing through the trees and God will speak to you out of that. In everything that's going on around you, it'll become part of your experience where you live in I am right now, this day, this moment. You know, God is calling his people to be in step with him right now. Yeah, and that's and that's something that we try to tell the way we don't do that enough, I think. Um, explaining that there's some there is a goal there. There is something to be attained that is not of this world that feeds us directly that we need, that that he, only he can provide. And and things can't provide, and power can't provide, and money can't provide. It's just so, something he provides. And that thing, that, that mana in the wilderness, that, that thing that sustains us, is available to anyone should they have a, a, any desire to, to get beyond what this life shows us, which is largely an illusion because, like you said, it's always it's, it's, uh, transitory, therefore it's illusory because it's, you, you can't say in a moment, the moment I am saying now, it's not the same as the moment we just had a minute ago. You know, so therefore, it's not solid. It's always changing, yeah. morphing, and you know, and we are fading in terms of how much time we have to kind of get this right. Uh, but why do you think? I mean, what do you think about the world right now, the chaos we see coming into the world, and what does that mean in terms of are people beginning to ask the questions, or what do you what do you think is happening? out in the world today with, with all the stresses and strains and economic nightmares and so forth? Well, you know, I, I think if things had continued on the same path that they were, a lot of people would have never asked the questions that are necessary. I, I mean, in, in, in a lot of ways, I think the things that are going on is, you know, there's, there's a silver lining. This is God's grace because, you know, and it's going to take, you know, things going down for people to actually wake up and call on him and for them to come back up. So, you know, it's, it's, I know with some of the difficult times, it's, you know, people don't want to struggle. They don't want to go through, but you know, the fire comes. I mean, scriptures is very, very clear about this, that the fire comes and it tests the quality of everyone's work and what they've built with. And, you know, when, when it comes to a person's life, when they go through that, you know, if they haven't walked with him in this, then what they've built is gets burned up. You know, I, as if God God gave a lot of people, you know, the many are called, the chosen of few. God called a lot of people and he gave them a call and you know, and he was willing to to lead them and to instruct them through this life. And when people turned away from his instruction, when they turned away from his voice, from his leading, what they ended up doing to themselves was trying to build their own house on the sand. And so what they're going to face is loss. They're going to face a difficult time. They're going to face a, a season that is going to be very hard. But in the midst of that, too, he's also merciful. And, you know, for those that, that will call on him, for those that will reach out to him, you know, hey, um, you know, he, he, he loves his creation. He loves his people. He doesn't, you know, you remember when, when Jesus was rejected by that town and James and John, uh, or um, and they wanted to call down fire. Yes, you know, I mean, Jesus. <laughs> you know, he 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 said he rebuked them. He said, you know, you don't know the spirit that you're you're coming from right now. He's like, you know, I it didn't come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. But still, in the midst of all of that, you know, the time came in 70 A.D. where Jerusalem was torn down. You know, there there is that difficult time that does come when you reject the King of Kings. You know, what do you expect when you, reject, when you reject salvation, when you reject the Savior of your souls? What else do you expect? I mean, that's the thing that I, I, it's amazing to me that when here it is, you're, you're, you're in this ocean. The waves are, are, are just, they're crashing around you. Somebody throws you a lifeline, throws you a life buoy, and you reject it. You push it away from you. What else do you expect but to drown? Yeah, well, <laughs> it shouldn't be a surprise. 
No, but it is a surprise to them because they feel that man can take care of himself and, and they have a loose idea that God's taking care of them and a loose idea that, um, you know, despite the fact that they're on and made a decision for Satan's side to conform to the world system, to be a part of that, that somehow they're also being taken care of. And clearly now what we see in the news shows the opposite. And again, I've got to go back to Mayor Bloomberg and, and New York and this whole idea that, you know, prayer is banned from the 9-11 memorial. So we're compounding a lie with a lie again. And uh, here's Bloomberg. He, he's out there saying there will be riots if the economic situation, you know, promising riots in the streets. And uh, I want to add to that, not only, Mr. Mayor, will there be riots, but there'll be nobody to rebuild what they break. New York in shambles, yeah. and you've basically cursed New York. He's cursed it. He's brought this fire upon. What would he expect? And you know, I, and a lot of times, well, we, the, you know, but, but the thing is, the thing is, Zeph, is that nobody can stop us from praying. You know, nobody can stop us from going within. Man can mandate whatever he wants, but you and you can get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all of the people around them bowing down to the idol the king sets up. But God, the people of God, they, they, I mean, they were clear with Nebuchadnezzar. They said, we don't need to be careful in answering you in this matter, O king. They said, as far as, you know, this thing goes, you know, we're never going to bow. You can toss us wherever you want. You can do whatever you want to us. But in this situation, as it pertains to who it is that I ultimately serve, where my allegiances lie, you can mandate it, you can make a law, you can pass whatever you want, but I'm still serving the King of Kings. I'm still bowing my knee before the Lord of Lords. I don't care about that. Right, so, right, right. I mean, in those situations, you know, these situations right now, you know, they just heap it upon themselves. They just heap one more judgment upon themselves. That's their choice. That's their free will decision as far as for us, as for me and my house, you know, we will serve the Lord. And right. that's the choice that we can go through in all of these situations. And but God leaders, will respect that in his people in those nations. Leaders should not be mandating no, no God. <laughs> you know? I mean, if they're smart, right. you know, they, they should not no, be. You know, I, well, you know, this is F2 is one thing that's interesting is that is that the, the, the world leaders that have something going on still in their head, they still pick up. On what, for, on what Pharaoh picked up with Joseph, which was, um, you know, in order to, to survive a difficult time coming on the nation, um, I need Joseph in place. And he realized that. Mm -hmm. And he put those people in those positions. And they did not disrespect uh, the king of kings. They realized, you know, Nebuchadnezzar realized, mm -hmm. um, you know, these were the, the that, that who was in control. You know, when the when the words were coming off of his lips, yeah. you know, that he was like, oh, look at the kingdom that I set up for myself. Literally one year from the day that the dream and the vision had come to him and Daniel interpreted it from the moment that he those words left his lips. Yeah. You know, God gave him the, the mind of an animal and put him in it, put everything back in perspective. So he was he was the big shot of the day. And God is a way of humbling these people and bringing it back into perspective. Okay. So you know, right. as if what, whatever people will mandate, whatever people will say, whatever laws will be passed for us, for God's children, we serve a higher authority. We serve somebody that we ultimately, you know, if we can live at peace with people, if we can can uh, if we try. But when it comes down to the crunch, there is a dividing line. And for us, you know, there is a point that where we do not cross and nobody can ask us to cross that. They can try, but we 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 will not bow ever. And see, Zeph, the, the fact that there are people even in the nation of America that have not bowed their knee. There are. are walking with the king of kings. That is a saving grace for that nation. That is the reason Amen. why I have hope for what's going to happen in America in the days to come. Okay, I like that. I like what you're saying. I think people out there, this is uh, Govinda from Sri Lanka, so you know, and we're coming at you live on, uh, and I haven't even announced the caller, WWCR 13845 megahertz on your dial, and you can also get the podcast at zefdaniel.com, zefdaniel.podbean.com. Uh, or zedjaw.com or any, you know, or look, Google it or whatever. And, you know, this, this podcast will be up on top. You'll be able to download it. I would listen to it a few times 
because um, there is great hope here, and there is a great uh, excitement here, and that excitement is something that uh, when we're talking about all these dark things and all these horrific things that are going on in the world today, and we're, we're talking about revealing things that have been kept in secret, and we're talking about psychopaths and what they do, and, and the people of God are being brought up with discernment on that. It's really nice to have in contrast to it or in addition to it all this hope and all this, this euphoric um, excitement uh, in the kingdom of the Lord, which is within us right now, and we can go there, and to have this steady, sure strength. If your mother and father forsake you, I, the Lord, will not forsake you. Uh, if, you if the world has made you sad, I will not make you sad. If the world has abandoned you, I will never abandon you. And abandon you. You're never alone. None of you are alone out there. And so, you, you know, it's, it's, it's always good to... To mix in, you know, it is horrific. And, and Govinda, you know, it's very much, uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, to get to Govinda's site, it's faithmix, F A I T H M I X dot com. Very simple, faithmix dot com to hear more Govinda. And, um, and that's what you should do. Uh, it, it, those of you who hear this podcast or this broadcast, uh, go check it out and you will be blessed. I guarantee it. And uh, we just keep on one day at a time, one moment at a time. And, uh, you, you know, and, and look, in this broadcast, we're, we get the horrors in the first hour, we get this, then there's some more coming later. We just keep putting it out there. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully God will lead us into giving you the whole perspective so that you're, on the one hand, equipped about the evil, because a lot of people are down, Govinda, about the evil around them. They're just, they're down in the dumps. And they're good brothers and sisters, but they're down in the dumps yeah. today. And they feel like, what's the use? And they feel like... Oh, you know, everywhere I go, they hate me or they close the door in my face or they're they're just getting meaner and meaner. And I have a soft heart and it's hard for me to stand up to it. It's hard for me to stand up to it when they're doing stuff to me. It's hard for me to stand up knowing what I know about the world and just trying to sometimes I can't even get outside. I feel so bad. What do you have to say uh, to, to that individual, to that person? Well, one is that is that uh, first of all anything that you go through this is common to the people of god you're not the first one to face these things so you know take heart because you're on the right path you're on the right road um you know zeph i mean part of my own path that god has taken me has been through some of the darkest things that have been going on in the world mm -hmm. uh, over the last maybe seven years i mean you know some of the things that yeah. god has sent me in the middle middle of yep. and i mean these are these are things that are you know on a natural level um you know some of the worst of what's been happening in the world over the last uh, i mean the last seven years and in the midst of those times um in some of the most challenging situations if 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 i allowed it if i allowed myself to get caught up into what the external was going on it would have driven me insane but because what god did in those times was he said look go within trust me call out to me in the middle of those situations call out to me because i'm there you know what did he say in scriptures be anxious about nothing but in all things with prayer and supplication make your requests known unto god i mean he's given us the answer he's already told it to us in the word people need to trust the words yes. they need to get back into the word they yes. need to start reading that bible again you've, you've put it on your shelf too long it's not don't pull it down and read a verse Get in there and read that thing because God will speak to you out of that. He will show you what you need to see. You need to start trusting the word that he said. You need to stop looking at your personal circumstances and get on a kingdom page because this life is not about you. This life is not about you know you and your personal situation you and your little life here and just trying to hold things together no you got to get off of that horse you got to start riding the kingdom the, the kingdom is calling god is calling his people to start living the life that he's called them to be and they are called to be right now in step with him you know what? in the worst possible situations wherever it has been in this world that god has sent me he's always been there I've always seen the light break forth in some of the darkest hours. I know the king that I serve. I know the Lord that I serve. I know that he is able to accomplish that which he's promised. He's able to fulfill his word. That which he said is what he will do. And the people that trust him, they live in the promises of God. You know, Zeph, the, the thing is, is that people's foundations are being tested. 
their lives are being tested. Their, what it is that they've trusted in is being tested. And in the midst of that test, when people realize that they haven't necessarily set themselves aright, set themselves aligned, that's okay. Because what you do in those times is you bring that before God and you say, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry. You know, actually, Barbara, love Barbara Marcotti, by the way. You guys got to go check her out at, uh, at Cornerstone Books. But um, Barbara, she sent me something the other day. And it's just beautiful. You know, it's just a little card. But it says, Lord Jesus, uh, I, you know, it's, it's like, yeah. I, I, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. You know, I mean, Amen. it's just like, you know, <laughs> hey, I just I just pray that. That's, that's just the prayer. It's Lord Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. You know, it's just like, just pray that and move on. Okay, you know, here just comes. Leave it where it's at and move on. And here comes one Peter. This is the scripture that uh, jumped out at me when you were talking about the scriptures. Uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an, incorrupt, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and one that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, uh, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, you love, in whom, though now you see him not, you believe, and you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of Christ, which was in them, uh, did signify when it tested, uh, testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober in the hope that in the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts of your ignorance, uh, but as he which hath called you as uh, holy, so be uh, a holy in all manner of conversation because it's written, be holy for I am holy. And it goes on. I'm going to stop right there because it, it, it goes on and on. Just a really great promises. But that's the scripture that jumped out. 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter Amen. 1. Amen. And you know, Zeph, we, we got to start, everybody, all of the people listening, you got to start talking to each other in the word. Get that word back out there. Stop thinking in your own opinions about what's going on and start speaking the word and the truth of God in every one of these situations. Because his word is true. It has, it has remained true throughout. When he spoke it, it is. And God gives his rhema for this day what it is that they need. Give us this day our daily bread. God speaks and he gives his people the word that they need for this day to carry them through, to strengthen them for the journey at hand. I, I gotta, mean, right now, the thing is that the devil... Yeah, Go ahead. I, I just got to read what, you know, I can't leave it right there. I, I, you know, I, Go ahead. <laughs> here, here we go. Uh, but seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit and unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see to it that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man is the flower of of the grass, the grass withers and the flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word uh, which by the gospel is preached to you. And that's the end of the first uh, chapter. And, and uh, I think it's appropriate. <laughs> Amen. I really you, do. You know, Zeph, that's probably for some people, that's probably the first time, that's the, probably the first chapter they've gone through in a week is right now. You know, I mean, people, I, I can see that. I can sense that, that there's people have gotten away from the word, you know, and because they've gotten away from the word, their, their spirits, their souls are, are, are struggling right now. You know, see, one thing that the enemy does is he works to starve people's souls. He works to starve their spirits. And he does that by bombarding their minds, bombarding their physical beings, mm -hmm. and keeping you away from the promises and the truth of God. So he works to keep you away from that which would strengthen you, and he tries to flood your life with that which will weaken you. 
And, you know, the people of God, we, we got to be wise to the methods of the enemy. You know, make some, we, we take decisions and choices each and every day about what it is that will be in our life and what it is that will be away from our lives. So, you know, it's, it right now is a time that God's people need to press in. You know, they need to press in because what we are coming into right now is an amazing time for the people of God. For those that have prepared themselves for what is to come, God is going to use them in uh, phenomenal ways, ways that you could never have imagined or put together in your life and your own wow. thinking. God is going to do that with you. But for the others that have, have uh, you know, sort of been stuck in this middle ground, you know, God will be merciful to you, but you're missing that which God would desire to do with your life. So, I, I mean, you know, Zef, people, God offers the best to those that will follow him. He really, really does. He offers abundant life to those that will follow him. But they got to trust him. They got to trust him. And, you know, those that have walked with him in this, we, we look back and we see and we know that he's been faithful. We can testify that he's been faithful. We look back at the things that he's brought us through. Zef, I shouldn't still be here, but I am. And the reason I'm still here is because God has a plan and a purpose for my life, mm -hmm. for the life that I would live in this with him. And I'm still here. So as long as I'm here, it's about his purposes. And when the time comes to check out, hey, I, you done bless me. <laughs> I'm, you know, so yeah. we, it's a win-win situation. It, 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 to, to live as Christ, to die is gain, you know. Uh, so, so you can't lose. Uh, so I guess there's people out there gleaning from this conversation in a prophetic way there's people out there that really you know need the gospel and but they need to be fed like you said they're starved and they need to be fed and these scriptures don't open up you know just to you know a carnal mind they really open up uh, via the holy spirit to a spiritual mind and um, but at the same time, that doesn't mean stay away from the scriptures until you feel spiritual. Get in there so that you might be changed from carnal to spiritual, from worrying to feeling victorious. Right now, uh, all of us that don't feel victorious or are worried about things, we need to shake that off right now in the name of Jesus. He is victory. We already have the victory. We have uh, eternal life. We have the hope and the glory. God takes care of us. He's on our side. There is no reason to worry. There's no reason to be upset. There's no reason. Uh, we're just doing it because that's conditioning. The world's conditioned us to feel bad. They want us to feel bad and grovel and all that. But we don't have to. We have the victory above and beyond the world. We don't need them. We don't need them to pride us up. We don't need, it doesn't matter if they don't like us or if they like us or if they want to diss us. It doesn't really matter if they want to mock and laugh at us. It doesn't matter. We already have the victory that they don't have. So we've got to rejoice in that knowing that it's not true, these things that they're doing, that they're just like disobedient children who are acting up uh, and saying things they don't understand uh, to people that do understand. If we do understand, we shouldn't listen to them and we shouldn't let any of that bother us because our Lord's already accepted this, what more do you want? Absolutely. What more do you want? Absolutely. I mean, it's, you, you've already won. You've already right. won. You know, God's people have already won. We've already won the victory in Christ. We have to walk through this thing. We have to overcome. We have to go through. God wants us to go through, but you've already won. That is the thing that the enemy does not want you to live in. He wants God's people to live like they've been defeated. But the, the truth of the matter is, is that God's people have won. And every time when we go into a situation, we go in, when you're in Christ Jesus, you go in as a victor. You go in as somebody that's already has the victory over every situation. And that's why when the word comes back to you in those situations and the devil throws out a lie, you can come back with the truth. And you can say in whatever situation, here's what the word says about this. This is what God says about me. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Over whatever situation might come my way, hey, I can go back to that thing and can say, look, you know, here's what God said. I don't care what the world says about it. Here's what God said about this. And, and Zeph, you know what? The word is becoming a, a more, it's just, it's just, it is so alive and so true right now. I mean, it's always been, but, but for God's people, it's just resonating. And when they start to live in that and they start to live in these promises, you just, just watch, just watch as, as you live in those things, how God will come through. 
I, I mean, in the worst possible situation you could possibly find yourself in, you will find uh, amazing victories. But it's for the people of God. It's for those that would actually follow him in this. It's not for the people that live halfway. If you live halfway, if you live on the fence, you die on the fence. And it's also painful the whole time. <laughs> it's very painful. <laughs> it's very painful. It's, you know, that's, that's the thing, Zeph, is I think, too, there's a, there's a bunch of people that you've just been on the fence and you've been straddling it for so long, you don't know another way. Mike, that you, that's the pain you're experiencing right now. Go you got to go all in one way or the other. All in. I agree completely all in. We're all out of time. I can't. I just looked at the clock. It was a long, It was like 10, you know, 45. Now it's like I got, I, I'm at the end. Faithmix.com. We're all out of time, folks. Um, uh, you can get more at uh, faithmix.com. You can get more by going to your Bibles. So we'll, we'll be doing a lot more, uh, uh, a lot more word because, you, you, you know, you got to have confidence to face a lot of these things. Govinda, I thank you so much for uh, being here today. And uh, just giving hey, us a word, us, guys. a word of encouragement. Let's let's close with a quick prayer. How about it, Govinda? Amen. Give us a prayer. Amen. Father God, Lord, we just want to say thank you again, Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, for your truth, for your word that is alive, for your people, Lord God, that have been. Um, destined for this time, Father. Lord, I just pray your blessing upon their lives. Lord, we break every demonic stronghold and every curse of the enemy against their lives right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we release your truth, your life, your purpose, your plan, everything that you desire for your people right now, Lord God, opened up in their lives. Father, I just pray for peace for those that need it right now and for rest and an assurance in you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much. And stay right there, Govinda. We're all out of time. Uh, Zef Daniel here. This is uh, WWCR, the last bastion of being able to say <laughs> the truth. And uh, we'll see you next week. Those of you who want to check out the podcast, ZefDaniel.com. And uh, God bless you, one and all.